structuralism and psychology, criticism and limitations. The phenomenon of structuralism had a rather brief time of dominating the realm of psychology, yet its influence has sent quite several ripples across the psychological practice. Although the framework is no longer applied, and the movement has effectively ceased to exist, it still produced a range of ideas crucial for further consideration. Though the structuralist approach was flawed in its efforts to prioritize individual experiences without questioning them, it did have a notable role in shaping an individual-oriented framework in psychology. The phenomenon of structuralism has a rather short history in psychology. First introduced by Wilhelm Wundt in the 19th century, the notion of structuralism implied the study of the human mind by examining it through the prism of individual experiences. Namely, structuralism sought to examine the self-reported changes in patients' sensations and attitudes, thus, developing the foundation for further intervention in the management of mental health concerns. Kong defines the subject matter as the methodology that guides one to develop a better understanding of human culture by considering people's experiences from a structural point of view. Therefore, structuralism encouraged both the individualist approach to the analysis of changes observed in people's behaviors and the emphasis on creating a coherent system of knowledge. Although the theoretical framework developed based on the structuralist approach is no longer used in psychology and nursing, it has expanded and evolved into an entirely new set of ideas that have been guiding nursing theory and practice. Specifically, in the practical context, the structuralist framework incited the development of a patient-oriented approach. More importantly, with the focus on patients' individual experiences, the importance of understanding the data obtained from clients on a cross-cultural level necessitated the development of the intercultural approach in nursing and the focus on diversity. Arguably, the patient-centered strategy presently used quite actively by nursing experts owes its existence to a notable degree to the structuralist theory. Specifically, Bakhari and Massoud explain that a range of concepts that have defined the emergence of post-structuralism in the healthcare setting was lifted from the structuralist perception of human experience as the paramount notion that should be prioritized when developing theoretical premises for explaining specific phenomena. In contrast to the structuralist approach, which could only be applied in a controlled setting due to the potential effect of biases arising from a subjective perspective that the structuralist framework suggests, the latter restricted the opportunities for research in nursing and psychology to a significant extent. In turn, the post-structuralist movement that gained traction due to the impact that structuralist ideas of the importance of experience left, allowed combining both individual experiences and the results of evidence-based research into the analysis, thus, increasing the validity of the arguments made in the process. Therefore, it would be wrong to claim that the structuralist theory left no legacy in psychology or nursing. On the contrary, Having spurred the emergence of post-structuralism, which allowed deconstructing of individual experiences and, therefore, created premises for evidence-based research and the further development of profound psychological theories, structuralism left a notable mark on psychology and nursing. Searching for the remnants of structuralism in modern psychology, one will recognize the emphasis on personal experiences and the importance of a personalized approach toward addressing patients' issues as one of the main effects of structuralism on contemporary nursing and psychological practice. Moreover, the idea of examining complex processes as a set of simpler ones, thus, understanding the very structure of specific phenomena, including emotional responses and the development of psychological issues, is used actively to this day in psychology. Being the primary principles of structuralism, the described notion of dissecting multi-layered constructs to approach patients' needs more effectively can be considered one of the hallmarks of modern psychology. Therefore, being lifted directly from the framework of structuralism, the specified approach can be considered the legacy of the structuralist theory. Overall, even though structuralism was abandoned quite some time ago, its effects on the perception of people's experiences and their role in addressing psychological concerns are still evident. Despite having had a rather brief presence in the theory and practice of psychology, structuralism still affected the current perception of both, defining the further evolution of theories in psychology. 
particularly, the emphasis on the approach involving controlled introspection as the means of promoting patient autonomy can be regarded as one of the main sources of influence that structuralism produced on modern psychology. Although most of the concepts that structuralism sought to advance were eventually questioned as subjective, the core concept of centering clients' needs and experiences has provided the foundation for noticeable improvements in the practice. Therefore, the legacy of structuralism needs to be recognized as a vital part of the development of psychological thought and the further progress of evidence-based research and practice.